to the 2023 CDL School Bus Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question 1. Which statement accurately describes the unique hazard associated with loading and unloading students? A. Students should quickly retrieve dropped items before leaving the bus. B. Students should be told to leave any dropped objects and move to the point of safety, out of danger, and get the driver's attention to retrieve the object. C. Students should wait for the driver to retrieve any dropped items before exiting. D. Students should leave their belongings on the bus for later retrieval. The correct answer is B. Students should be told to leave any dropped objects and move to the point of safety out of danger and get the driver's attention to retrieve the object. To address the specific danger of loading and unloading, it is essential to instruct students that in the event of dropped objects, their priority should be to move to a safe location and alert the driver for assistance, reducing the risk of accidents and ensuring student safety. Question 2. What follows the decision on the required evacuation method? A. Confirming passenger counts. B. Evaluating emergency exits. C. Securing the bus. D. Alerting authorities. The correct answer is C. Securing the bus. Subsequent to selecting the necessary evacuation approach, the immediate action is to secure the bus. This helps prevent accidental movement and potential risks ensuring the safety of students and responders during the evacuation process. Question 3. In the event that you are loading students along your route and are unable to verify their presence, what action should you take? A. Continue driving and alert the school. B. Wait for a few minutes and then proceed. C. Resume driving and inform the parents later. D. Secure the bus take the key, and check around and underneath the bus. The correct answer is D. Secure the bus, take the key, and check around and underneath the bus. If you're unable to account for students while loading along the route, it's important to prioritize their safety. The correct action is to secure the bus, take the key, and conduct a thorough check around and underneath the bus to ensure that no students are inadvertently left behind minimizing any potential risks. Question 4. What factor determines the need for a school bus driver to stop at a passive railway crossing? A. The type of crossing, which does not have any type of traffic control device. B. The weather conditions. C. The time of day. D. The number of students on the bus. The correct answer is A. The type of crossing which does not have any type of traffic control device. A passive railway crossing lacks any traffic control device, making it crucial for a school bus driver to stop and ensure the safety of students and the bus. This precaution helps prevent accidents or collisions with trains at crossings where no active signals or barriers are present. Question 5. What is the minimum number of emergency exits required on a school bus? A. 2, B, 4, C, 3, D, 5. The correct answer is B, 4. School buses are mandated to have a minimum of four emergency exits to ensure swift evacuation in case of an emergency, prioritizing the safety of passengers on board. Question 6. What is the standardized color used to paint all school buses? A, bright red. B, royal blue. C, National School Bus Yellow. D. Forest Green. The correct answer is C. National School Bus Yellow. All school buses are required to be painted in the distinctive National School Bus Yellow color. This color enhances visibility and indicates the presence of a school bus, promoting safety for students and other road users. Question 7. When students need to cross the street after exiting the bus, which action is recommended for their safety? A. Cross immediately and quickly. B. Follow the student ahead without stopping. C. Look both ways and cross when ready. D. 
For crossing, students should make eye contact with the bus driver and wait for the driver's signal that it is safe to proceed. The correct answer is D. For crossing, students should make eye contact with the bus driver and wait for the driver's signal that it is safe to proceed. To ensure the safety of students when crossing the street, they should make eye contact with the bus driver and wait for the driver's signal that it's safe to proceed. This procedure helps prevent accidents and ensures a controlled and secure crossing. Question 8. For proper adjustment of the outside left and right side flat mirrors, what area should be visible? A. 200 feet behind the bus. B. The side of the bus. C. The road directly behind the bus. D. The sky and clouds. The correct answer is A. 200 feet behind the bus. Adjusting the outside flat mirrors to see 200 feet behind the bus allows the driver to maintain a clear view of the surrounding traffic, ensuring safer lane changes and overall awareness of the road behind the bus. Question 9. Which of the following actions is accurate regarding bus evacuation procedures? A. Immediately exit the bus using any available door. B. If possible, inform the dispatcher about the evacuation location, conditions, and required assistance. C. Remain in your seat until instructed by a passenger. D. Exit through the rear. Emergency exit only. The correct answer is B. If possible, inform the dispatcher about the evacuation location, conditions, and required assistance. When evacuating a bus, if feasible, notifying the dispatcher about the evacuation location, conditions, and type of assistance needed helps ensure a coordinated response and appropriate support during the evacuation process. Question 10. What is a recommended practice when students are being unloaded from the bus? A. Tell students to remain seated until they are told to exit. B. Instruct students to exit as soon as the bus stops. C. Allow students to exit freely at any time. D. Open all doors simultaneously for a faster exit. The correct answer is A. Tell students to remain seated until they are told to exit. Advising students to stay seated until instructed to exit ensures an orderly and controlled unloading process, minimizing the risk of accidents and promoting student safety. Question 11. What action should you take right after coming to a stop? A. Allow children to start boarding immediately. B. Tell the children to stand back until you are ready for them to load. C. Check the bus engine and lights first. D. Open all doors and let children enter at once. The correct answer is B. Tell the children to stand back until you are ready for them to load. After stopping, it's important to ensure the safety of children by instructing them to stand back until you're prepared for them to start boarding. This practice prevents any potential hazards and maintains a controlled loading process. Question 12. Apart from verifying spare electrical fuses, three red reflective triangles, and a correctly charged and rated fire extinguisher, what other emergency items must school bus drivers inspect? A. A map of the bus route and nearby gas stations. B. A flashlight and extra batteries. C. Three red burning flares, a nine-item first aid kit. D. A whistle and a set of jumper cables. The correct answer is C. Three red burning flares, a nine-item first aid kit. In addition to the mentioned items, school bus drivers must also inspect three red burning flares and a nine-item first aid kit to ensure preparedness for emergency situations on the road. These extra items contribute to the safety and well-being of students and other passengers. Question 13. What percentage of parents may have the school bus driver as their only contact with the school system? A. 45%. B. 68%. C. 92%. D. 85%. The correct answer is D. 85%. The school bus driver often serves as the sole point of contact from the school system for a significant portion of parents, with the percentage being as high as 
This emphasizes the important role of the driver in fostering communication and a positive relationship between the school and parents. Question 14. When approaching highway rail crossings in a school bus, what is the recommended minimum distance of containment to ensure complete clearance of the railroad tracks? A. The length of the bus. B. Twice the length of the bus. C. The length of the bus minus 10 feet. D. The length of the bus plus 15 feet. The correct answer is D. The length of the bus plus 15 feet. To guarantee the safety of the school bus and its occupants at highway rail crossings, it is advisable to have a minimum of the bus's length plus 15 feet of containment beyond the railroad tracks. This distance helps prevent any part of the bus from extending onto the tracks, reducing the risk of collisions with trains. Question 15. How can you verify that your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes, ABS, while driving? A. Observe a red ABS warning light on the dashboard. B. The yellow ABS malfunction lamp on the instrument panel will light when you start the engine. C. Notice increased brake pedal resistance. D. Feel the brake pedal pulsate during hard braking. The correct answer is B. The yellow ABS malfunction lamp on the instrument panel will light when you start the engine. If your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes, ABS, the yellow ABS malfunction lamp on the instrument panel will illuminate momentarily when you start the engine, confirming the presence of the ABS system. Question 16. What is the main purpose of anti-lock brakes, ABS? A. Keep your wheels from locking off during hard brake application. B. Reduce tire wear. C. Prevent skidding while turning. D. Enhance fuel efficiency. The correct answer is A. Keep your wheels from locking off during hard brake application. Anti-lock brakes, ABS, are designed to prevent wheel lockup and maintain steering control during hard braking, thereby increasing overall vehicle stability and reducing the risk of skidding or loss of control. Question 17. What is the appropriate adjustment for the outside left and right side? Crossover mirrors to ensure visibility. A. The road directly behind the bus. B. The right and left front tires touching the ground. C. The back of the bus and rear bumper. D. The sky and clouds. The correct answer is B. The right and left front tires touching the ground. Properly adjusting the outside left and right side. Crossover mirrors to see the right and left front tires touching the ground aids in detecting potential obstacles and pedestrians within the blind spot areas near the front of the bus. Question 18. What is the primary purpose of the overhead inside mirror? A. Monitor the driver's own reflection. B. Observe the traffic behind the bus. C. Check the condition of the bus interior. D. See all of the students. The correct answer is D. See all of the students. The overhead inside mirror is positioned to provide the school bus driver with a comprehensive view of all the students on board, ensuring their safety and well-being while the bus is in motion. Question 19. Under which circumstance would it be necessary to evacuate the school bus? A. Rainy weather with reduced visibility. B. The bus is stalled on a railroad track, but there is no train in sight. C. Engine temperature slightly higher than usual. D. A minor fender bender with another vehicle. The correct answer is B. The bus is stalled on a railroad track, but there is no train in sight. Evacuation of the school bus becomes imperative if the bus becomes stalled on a railroad track, even if there is no train in sight as it ensures the safety of the passengers in a potentially hazardous situation. Question 20. To what distance might the blind spot behind the bus extend? A. 400 feet. B. 300 feet. C. 200 feet. D. 500 feet. The correct answer is A. 400 feet. The blind spot behind the bus, also known as the no zone, can extend up to 400 feet highlighting the importance of thorough checking and caution while maneuvering or changing lanes to ensure the safety of other road users.
Question 21. At what point should you turn on the alternating flashing amber warning lights on a school bus? A. 100 to 300 feet before school bus stop. B. As soon as students start boarding. C. Upon coming to a complete stop. D. Only when there is oncoming traffic. The correct answer is A. 100 to 300 feet before school bus stop. Activating the alternating flashing amber warning lights. 100 to 300 feet before reaching the school bus stop helps alert other motorists and pedestrians to the upcoming stop, allowing them ample time to prepare and slow down for the safe loading or unloading of students. Question 22. In the absence of a marked stop line at a railroad crossing, what are the mandatory limits for the minimum and maximum stopping distance for a school bus? A. No closer than 5 feet and no further than 30 feet from the tracks. B. No closer than 10 feet and no further than 40 feet from the tracks. C. No closer than 20 feet and no further than 60 feet from the tracks. D. No closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet, where you have the best view of the tracks. The correct answer is D. No closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet, where you have the best view of the tracks. When no marked stop line is present at a railroad crossing, a school bus is required to stop no closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet from the tracks, ensuring the driver has optimal visibility of the tracks and any approaching trains. Question 23. What is the recommended distance that students should maintain while exiting the bus and walking? A. At least 10 feet away from the side of the bus. B. At least 8 feet away from the side of the bus. C. At least 5 feet away from the side of the bus. D. At least 15 feet away from the side of the bus. The correct answer is A. At least 10 feet away from the side of the bus. To ensure the safety of students, it is advised that they exit the bus and walk at least 10 feet away from the side of the bus. This distance helps prevent accidents and ensures a clear path for the students and the driver. Question 24. What is the definition of a passive railroad crossing? A. A crossing with flashing lights and crossing gates. B. A railroad crossing that does not have any type of traffic control device. C. A crossing with a traffic signal nearby. D. A crossing where trains frequently pass. The correct answer is B. A railroad crossing that does not have any type of traffic control device. A passive railroad crossing refers to a crossing without any traffic control devices, such as flashing lights or crossing gates. Drivers must exercise caution and follow specific procedures when encountering such crossings to ensure safety. Question 25. How should you observe all mirrors? A. Rapidly and repeatedly. B. In a logical sequence to ensure that a child or object is not in any of the danger zones. C. In a random order. D. Briefly and intermittently. The correct answer is B. In a logical sequence to ensure that a child or object is not in any of the danger zones. It's crucial to observe all mirrors in a systematic and logical sequence to ensure that no child or object is located within the danger zones around the school bus, thus enhancing safety during operations. Question 26. Why is it essential to comprehend the loading and unloading procedures? A. To pass the driver's test. B. To avoid delays in the bus schedule. C. Because more students are killed while getting on and off a school bus each year. D. To satisfy the school administration. The correct answer is C. Because more students are killed while getting on and off a school bus each year. Understanding the loading and unloading procedures is of utmost importance because a significant number of student fatalities occur during these critical moments, underscoring the need for strict adherence to safety protocols. Question 27. What is the fundamental guideline for school buses when approaching and traversing railroad tracks? A. Accelerate and proceed swiftly. B. 
Maintain a constant speed. C. Change lanes without stopping. D. Stop, look, and listen. The correct answer is D. Stop, look, and listen. The core principle for school buses at railroad crossings is to stop, look, and listen, ensuring the safety of the bus and its passengers by identifying any approaching trains and avoiding potential collisions. Question 28. According to regulations, school buses are required to possess A and blank lights overhead warning system to manage traffic at a school bus stop. A, 8, B, 6, C, 4, D, 10. The correct answer is A, 8. School buses are mandated to have an eight lights overhead warning system, serving as an effective means to control and alert traffic during student pickup and drop off at bus stops, ensuring safety. Question 29. How often should you inspect your mirrors while loading and unloading students? A. Occasionally. B. Continuously. C. Regularly. D. At every other stop. The correct answer is B. Continuously. While loading and unloading students, it's crucial to check your mirrors continuously to monitor the surroundings, ensuring the safety of students and preventing accidents. Question 30. What is the recommended action when operating a school bus in windy conditions? A. Speed up to maintain control. B. Relax your grip on the steering wheel. C. Keep a strong grip on the steering wheel and try to anticipate gusts. D. Open the windows to balance air pressure. The correct answer is C. Keep a strong grip on the steering wheel and try to anticipate gusts. When driving a school bus in high wind, it's important to maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel and anticipate gusts to ensure stability and safe control of the vehicle amidst challenging weather conditions. Question 31. Following the proper securing of the bus, what should be your subsequent action when dealing with a disruptive student? A. Request assistance from law enforcement. B. Immediately stop the bus and escort the student off. C. Continue driving and hope the behavior improves. D. Stand up and speak respectfully to the offender. If a change of setting is needed, have the student move to a seat near you. The correct answer is D. Stand up and speak respectfully to the offender. If a change of setting is needed, have the student move to a seat near you. After ensuring the bus is secure, addressing an unruly student involves standing up and engaging in respectful communication. If necessary, you may also facilitate a change of seating arrangement to manage the situation more effectively and maintain a safe environment on the bus. Question 32. At what distance from a railroad crossing should you activate hazard lights? A. 50 feet. B. 100 feet. C. 150 feet. D. 200 feet. The correct answer is D. 200 feet. Hazard lights should be activated approximately 200 feet before a railroad crossing to alert other drivers of the upcoming stop, ensuring additional safety measures are in place as the school bus approaches the tracks. Question 33. What is the maximum distance in feet within which students should cross the road in front of the bus during loading or unloading procedures? A. 10. B. 7. C. 5. D. 15. The correct answer is A. 10. To ensure the safety of students, they should cross the road in front of the bus within a maximum distance of 10 feet, minimizing their exposure to traffic and potential hazards. Question 34. Among the various spaces surrounding your bus, which holds the highest significance? A. To the side. B. To the front. C. Above the bus. D. To the rear. The correct answer is B. To the front. The foremost space around the bus, which demands the highest priority for vigilance, is the area to the front. Ensuring a clear and safe path ahead is crucial for preventing accidents and safeguarding the well-being of students and pedestrians. Question 35. 
Which types of school bus accidents necessitate reporting? A. Only those involving other vehicles. B. Only those resulting in injuries. C. Only those causing significant damage. D. All. The correct answer is D. All. All school bus accidents, regardless of the extent of damage or whether injuries occurred, should be reported. Comprehensive reporting ensures a thorough assessment of safety and assists in implementing necessary improvements. Question 36. At what distance from a school bus stop should you activate your overhead amber light? A. 100 feet. B. 150 feet. C. 250 feet. D. 200 feet. The correct answer is D. 200 feet. The overhead amber light on a school bus should be activated approximately 200 feet from a bus stop to alert other drivers and prepare them for the upcoming stop, enhancing overall safety for students and pedestrians. Question 37. According to the CDL manual, what is the concluding action when picking up students at a bus stop? A. Make a final check to confirm all traffic stops before opening the bus door and signaling students to approach. B. Start moving the bus forward slowly. C. Open the bus door and allow students to approach immediately. D. Begin lowering the bus's entrance door. The correct answer is A. Make a final check to confirm all traffic stops before opening the bus door and signaling students to approach. The final step, as outlined in the CDL manual, involves ensuring that all traffic has come to a halt verifying safety before opening the bus door and signaling students to approach for boarding. This precautionary measure prevents accidents and enhances student safety during the loading process. Question 38. How can you effectively address unruly behavior on the bus in the safest manner? A. Ignore the behavior and continue driving. B. Pull off the road in a safe location secure the bus, stand up, and tell the students what behavior you expect of them. C. Call the parents immediately. D. Yell at the students to stop. The correct answer is B. Pull off the road in a safe location, secure the bus, stand up, and tell the students what behavior you expect of them. The safest approach to manage unruly behavior on the bus involves pulling off the road to a secure location ensuring the bus is stationary, and then addressing the students assertively to set expectations for proper behavior. This method minimizes distractions and maintains a safe environment for everyone on board. Question 39. During your inspection of the handicap lift, what issues should you be searching for? A. Dust and debris accumulation. B. Correct seatbelt installation. C leaking, damaged, or missing parts, and making sure that the lift is fully retracted and latched. D. Noise from the lift motor. The correct answer is C. Leaking, damaged, or missing parts, and making sure that the lift is fully retracted and latched. While examining the handicap lift, it's crucial to identify any signs of damage, leakage, or missing components, and also ensure that the lift is fully retracted and securely latched, thereby ensuring the safety and functionality of the lift for passengers with disabilities. Question 40. Ensure the entry door is free from harm and confirm that it is a. Locked from the outside b. Partially open for ventilation c. Equipped with additional mirrors d. Operated smoothly and closes securely from the inside the correct answer is D. Operated smoothly and closes securely from the inside. When inspecting the entry door, it's important to verify that it functions smoothly and can be securely closed from the inside to guarantee the safety and convenience of passengers while entering or exiting the bus. Question 41. What is the minimum distance the driver must ensure while stopping on a railroad crossing? A. 15 feet. B. 10 feet, C, 5 feet, D, 20 feet. The correct answer is A, 
15 feet. When stopping at a railroad crossing, it's imperative for the driver to maintain a minimum distance of 15 feet from the tracks to ensure the safety of the bus and its occupants from any potential oncoming trains. Question 42. What action should you take if the gate begins to lower as you begin crossing a railroad, highway crossing? A. Drive through the gate. B. Stop immediately and wait for the gate to fully close. C. Sound the horn repeatedly to alert oncoming trains. D. Speed up to clear the tracks quickly. The correct answer is A. Drive through the gate. In the event that the gate begins to descend as you approach a railroad highway crossing, you should continue driving through the gate to avoid getting trapped on the tracks and potentially risking a collision with an oncoming train. Question 43. In situations where multiple children are being unloaded at a bus stop, which procedure is most effective in preventing unloading obstacles? A. Allowing students to exit without supervision. B. Using a megaphone to announce the bus stop. C. Asking the students to line up before exiting. D. The driver counts the students as they disembark before moving. The correct answer is D. The driver counts the students as they disembark before moving. To prevent any unloading obstacles or incidents, it's important for the driver to count the students as they disembark from the bus before proceeding. This ensures that no student is accidentally left behind at the bus stop. Question 44. What is the recommended course of action when a school bus becomes stalled on a track at a railroad crossing? A. Attempt to push the bus off the tracks with the help of students. B. The driver should evacuate the bus and have students in a group directly behind the bus. C. Keep trying to restart the bus engine. D. Sound the horn repeatedly and wait for assistance. The correct answer is B. The driver should evacuate the bus and have students in a group directly behind the bus. In the event of a school bus being stalled on a track at a railroad crossing, the safest approach is for the driver to evacuate the bus and gather the students in a group directly behind the bus, ensuring their safety and minimizing the risk of a potential collision with an approaching train. Question 45. What purpose does the overhead rearview mirror inside the bus serve? A. To monitor passenger behavior. B. To reflect external road conditions. C. To improve driver visibility. D. To enhance interior lighting. The correct answer is A. To monitor passenger behavior. The overhead rearview mirror inside the bus is utilized primarily to monitor passenger activity, ensuring a safe and secure environment for students while the bus is in motion. Question 46. What makes the correct adjustment and utilization of all mirrors essential for the safe operation of a school bus? A. In order to observe the danger zones around the bus and look for the students, traffic, and other objects in this area. B. To enhance the bus's appearance. C. To admire the bus's exterior. D. To provide a clear view of the sky. The correct answer is A. In order to observe the danger zones around the bus and look for the students, traffic, and other objects in this area. Properly adjusted and utilized mirrors enable the driver to effectively monitor the surrounding areas, including the danger zones around the bus, ensuring the safety of students, pedestrians, and other vehicles on the road. Question 47. In the event of losing ABS control at one or more wheels, what is the recommended course of action? A. Immediately stop the bus and evacuate passengers. B. Drive normally because you still have regular brakes, but have the system serviced soon. C. Increase your speed to regain ABS control. D. Activate the hazard lights and pull over to the side of the road. The correct answer is B. Drive normally because you still have regular brakes, but have the system serviced soon. If ABS control is lost at one or more wheels, it is advised to continue driving normally 
since the regular brakes are still functional, while also arranging for the ABS system to be serviced at the earliest opportunity. Question 48. What is the appropriate braking technique for a bus equipped with ABS brakes? A. Pump the brakes rapidly. B. Slam on the brakes suddenly. C. Apply the brakes as usual. D. Only use the emergency brake. The correct answer is C. Apply the brakes as usual. When driving a bus with ABS brakes, it is recommended to apply the brakes as usual without pumping, as the ABS system will automatically modulate the brake pressure to prevent wheel lockup and maintain steering control. Question 49. At what distance from a stop should you activate the alternating flashing amber lights? A. 100 feet. B. 150 feet. C. 250 feet. D. 200 feet. The correct answer is D. 200 feet. To provide ample warning to other drivers and pedestrians, the alternating flashing amber lights should be activated approximately 200 feet before reaching a stop indicating the upcoming halt of the school bus. Question 50. What are the primary contributors to the remarkable safety record of school buses? A. Routes and schedules. B. Fuel efficiency. C. Passenger capacity. D. Vehicles and drivers. The correct answer is D. Vehicles and drivers. The exceptional safety record of school buses is attributed to the quality of the vehicles themselves and the competence of the drivers operating them, ensuring the protection and well-being of students during their transportation. Question 51. What written tests must individuals successfully complete to become a school bus driver? A. CDL General Knowledge, Passenger Endorsement, School Bus Endorsement. B. Basic Math Test, Hazard Perception Test, Defensive driving test. C. Road rules test. First aid test. Vehicle inspection test. D. Traffic signs test. Spelling and grammar test. Geography test. The correct answer is A. CDL general knowledge. Passenger endorsement. School bus endorsement. Aspiring school bus drivers are required to pass the CDL general knowledge test obtain a passenger endorsement, and secure a school bus endorsement, ensuring they possess the necessary knowledge and skills to operate a school bus safely and responsibly. Question 52. When does the highest risk period occur on a school bus ride? A. During routine maintenance stops. B. On well-paved roads. C. In good weather conditions. D. When loading and unloading students. The correct answer is D, when loading and unloading students. The greatest potential for accidents and safety concerns typically arises when loading and unloading students, as this is when students are most vulnerable to traffic and other hazards around the bus. Question 53. How should you perform a post-trip inspection? A. Ask the passengers for feedback. B. Immediately exit the bus. C. You should walk through the bus and around the bus. D. Check the engine compartment only. The correct answer is C. You should walk through the bus and around the bus. After completing a trip, it is recommended to conduct a thorough inspection by walking through and around the bus to ensure that no students or belongings are left behind and to identify any potential issues requiring attention before the next journey. Question 54. What should you be able to see when adjusting the outside left and right side convex mirrors? A. Only the immediate area behind the mirror. B. The bus interior and passengers. C. The road ahead and oncoming traffic. D. The entire area to the rear of the mirror along the side of the bus. The correct answer is D the entire area to the rear of the mirror along the side of the bus. When adjusting the outside convex mirrors, they should be positioned to provide a view of the entire area extending to the rear of the mirror along the side of the bus, 
helping to eliminate blind spots and enhance overall road safety. Question 55. How often are school bus drivers typically required to undergo a physical examination by most states? A. Monthly. B. B. Annually. C. Annually. D. Every three years. The correct answer is C. Annually. In line with safety regulations, school bus drivers are generally obligated to undergo a physical examination on an annual basis to ensure their health and fitness for the responsible task of operating a school bus. Question 56. Within which regions does the appropriately adjusted outside left and right side convex mirrors grant visibility? A. Only immediately alongside the bus. B. Front of the rear tires touching the ground, the entire side of the bus up to the mirror mounts, and at least one traffic lane on either side of the bus. C. The road directly behind the bus. D. Only the area directly below the mirrors. The correct answer is B. Front of the rear tires touching the ground, the entire side of the bus up to the mirror mounts, and at least one traffic lane on either side of the bus. The properly adjusted outside left and right side convex mirrors provide visibility, encompassing the front of the rear tires touching the ground, the entire side of the bus up to the mirror mounts, and at least one traffic lane on either side of the bus, significantly improving overall situational awareness for the driver. Question 57. What is the primary motivation for conducting a school bus inspection? A. For safety required by federal, state, and local laws. B. To extend the life of the bus. C. To save on maintenance costs. D. To improve fuel efficiency. The correct answer is A. For safety required by federal, state, and local laws. The paramount reason for performing a school bus inspection is to ensure compliance with safety regulations mandated by federal, state, and local laws, ultimately safeguarding the well-being of students and all road users. Question 58. What should a driver do if they inadvertently fail to unload a child at a bus stop? A. Continue to the next stop and hope the child gets off. B. Radio the dispatcher for direction and follow the local procedure. C. Immediately inform the school administration. D. Discontinue the route and return to the missed stop. The correct answer is B. Radio the dispatcher for direction and follow the local procedure. In the event that a child is accidentally not unloaded at a bus stop, the driver's appropriate course of action is to promptly contact the dispatcher via radio for guidance and adhere to the established local procedure to ensure the child's safety and proper resolution of the situation. Question 59. According to regulations, when are the warning lights on a school bus legally required to be activated? A. When passing a slower vehicle. B. When driving in heavy rain. C. When approaching a railroad crossing. D. When stop to load or unload students. The correct answer is D. When stop to load or unload students. The warning lights on a school bus are mandated to be activated only when the bus comes to a stop for the purpose of loading or unloading students, ensuring the safety of those getting on or off the bus. Question 60. Who holds the role of overseeing and managing students during the bus route? A. School principal. B. Bus driver. C. Bus mechanic. D. Bus aide. The correct answer is B. Bus driver. The individual responsible for supervising and maintaining control over students during the bus route is the bus driver, ensuring a safe and orderly environment on the bus. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.